everyone. This video is long overdue, maybe three years overdue. Um, I've been wanting to do this video for so long. I actually have recorded myself doing this video about two other times and it didn't work out too well. Um, I was stumbling, I was all over my words, I just, I wasn't ready to record. Um, today, I'm going to be talking about a traumatic experience that I had, um, and then it touches on why I just went MIA from YouTube. Well, I put one video out, I think, my labor and delivery video, but, um, yeah, I'll just get into it. So, I'm actually gonna have Deepo come in on the video, and he's going to speak on his perspective because what happened to me I don't really remember a lot that happened what I'm talking about that happened to me is I had a stillbirth at 36 weeks um, that's why I recorded a lot of pregnancy videos I recorded my entire journey being pregnant this was in 2016 and I was due in April do you remember the due date? I think it was April 8th was the due date, but I had a stillbirth on March 22nd to a little boy. We named him Maceo. Um, so I just, this isn't really spoken about, especially in the black community. I didn't realize that it's happened to so many people until after it happened to me. Um, so I'm just gonna get into what happened. I've checked my inbox. I'm sorry I haven't responded to a lot of you guys. But everyone was wondering, like, where's the baby? Where's your videos? Um, what happened? How do you have a little girl now? There's just a lot of questions, and a lot of you guys don't really know what happened. I posted here and there on Instagram. Um, every time it's like his birthday comes around, we'll all release balloons or whatever. But we haven't really, like we've told people the story in individual pieces or for those who know us really well, know the story. But um, yeah, so to backtrack, I've been seeing this doctor. I was recommended, I was referred by two people by this doctor, so I thought nothing of it. I said, okay, well, I guess if you guys had good experiences, I will too, etc., etc. Didn't really do my research much and the doctor was really close to home. Um, so long story short i don't that doctor just it was neglect um i've posted videos here on youtube with me complaining to the doctor that my feet were extremely swollen um i had a big loss of appetite i just wanted to drink water or eat ice there were a lot of things that and because it was my first pregnancy i didn't really know any better so everything the doctor told me, he would check my stomach, he would say, oh, okay, you're fine, you're good. And he would always brush it off and make jokes. Like, oh, you're the one who decided to open your legs, so ha ha ha, of course you're gonna feel pain there. Like, I don't know, it's my first pregnancy, but then a lot, like maybe seven months or eight months, I gained a lot of weight, especially in my last week, I gained over 20 pounds. And we went to the doctor and I said, uh, like I went up two sizes. I was a, a size large. I'm small. I'm really small. So for me to fit in large is a big deal for me. I mean, I wish I was still that size, but whatever. <laughs> um, so yeah, where was I? For the last week. Yeah, the last week I gained a lot of weight. He said, of course, in your last trimester, a lot of women have swollen feet and they gain a lot of weight, which is true. But I thought mine was an excessive amount. And I said, okay, well, it's my first child. I don't know. Maybe that's just how my body's reacting. There were two times where I said to be something just doesn't feel right. Let's go to the hospital twice, two different hospitals. We went to Humber and the other one was Mount Sinai, I think. Downtown. Yeah. Um, so, no, St. Michael's, it was St. Michael's, Mount Sinai is where I gave birth to Soleil. Yeah. So we went to St. Michael's in Humber, and I, we went to complain, they checked, 
they did a stress test they said everything was okay of course it's our both our first child so we're gonna listen to the doctor's orders and think that everything's okay they showed us the they made us listen to the heartbeat and everything um so yeah now on the exact day that i was 36 weeks so i was full term i said to my mom i really want mackerel and green banana for dinner um, i was craving it i got up from a nap dinner was ready had my dinner and then i started feeling just off my whole body just didn't i didn't feel right so i i was thinking i was going like i was i was in labor yeah. um i took a shower I was like, oh my gosh, I don't feel right. And then I ate some of my dinner and I just threw up everything. And then Vico said that I threw up. I, he remembers me texting him that I threw up blood. So he rushed over, rushed me to the hospital. Um, I asked mom to get the my baby bag ready because I'm thinking that the baby's like coming or whatever. So, so then you met me, we rushed to the hospital and then my vision was just gone. I remember when I picked you up. There's, mind you guys, there's a lot of there's a lot of parts I don't remember. There's a lot of things I do not remember because of the amount of drugs that I I had to get. I'll get into that, but yeah, I remember texting you, and um, I was like, "Mom, just be ready. I gotta go like right now, cause something's not right." Yeah, your mom brought you down, and she's like. My eyes already losing some of her vision. I'm like, vision? In my head, I'm like, this is... I never heard about this before, you know? Yeah. So now I'm just super worried. Now I'm just rushing into the hospital. And as you're speeding, speeding, speeding like, speeding down Peel, speeding, I, I was like, oh my gosh, I can't see. Like, all I saw, all I remember seeing, you know when you're on the highway and you just see the street lights going by? And it's really dark that's all i remember seeing that's it and every you know the drunk driving commercial where it says don't drink and drive and it shows that is exactly what i saw that commercial exactly everything was dark and i just see the street lights passing by so i remember walking in the hospital and telling you i can't see um, basically holding you like no, and we're looking wheelchair. for a wheelchair. A wheelchair. Yeah. I end up leaving you right at the emergency, park the car, and then someone yeah. was pushing you on a wheelchair. And I have to catch up, get the wheelchair, bring you up. Yeah. And it was kind of like hell there. Yeah. So he's dying upstairs. So. But um, you remember when the nurse is like, oh, let's check you. She was pissing me off. I'm going to get to like, that. She started asking you weird questions. Downstairs? No, upstairs. Yeah, I remember. Um, we went upstairs, and then we remember finally we got to, to the... We had to find someone. Yeah. So there was one nurse on duty. found one someone nurse. who was, I think, one, was on their break or something. And then all of a sudden, she just had a worried face, and I was like, no way. There was one nurse. We ran upstairs, um, and then giving my health card, whatever. She's asking me a bunch of questions and I'm like, honestly, I can't see you right now. We need to hurry and get me a doctor, like ASAP. He, he can give you all of my information. He has everything. Um, and she's like, ma'am, I need to. And I'm just like, here's my health card. I can't see, I'm losing my vision. And I kept saying that. And I remember leaving you and I stood up in the hallway and I started looking for the doctor. Do you remember? I walked down the hall and then I was holding on to the wall. It was on the right side and there was a desk. Oh my gosh, this is all coming back to me. Um, and then a blonde lady came and I was telling her, I can't see, I can't see. And she's like, oh my gosh. And she called, like, she called up doctors from their house to come. They're like, we need you, we need you to come in right now, emergency. Um, yeah, finally. They, they put you on the stretcher. Yeah. They put me on a stretcher and started wheeling me down the halls, like running. Check, and all I remember. Your, your paws, laid you down. They checked the babies. Oh, Are yes, they? this is what happened. They brought me into a room. Mm -hmm. They brought me into a room, and I'm laying there, and they checked for my blood pressure. My blood pressure 
was out of this world. It was 2.30 over 102 or something like that. I don't even remember. It was crazy. I just remember the nurse, like, good thing you brought her in time. Or I remember the nurse it. saying to you, I'm sorry, but you have to call her family now. Yeah. And I was like, call yeah. my family. You know what that means. So me, I blocked everybody out and I just started praying, praying, praying in my head. I'm like, Lord, just please cover me in the blood of Jesus. Like, please, what is going on? What's happening? I just started praying and then they put the catheter up me and then they check for the baby and that's when they're like, sorry, there's no heartbeat. And I'm just ignoring everybody. I'm like, what? What is happening? So I'm like, I'm and like, this is not even an accurate machine. I'm like, you guys, you guys have to do, do it the again because the blood I pressure. I remember the machine was so this little rinky dinky machine. I remember you saying that, and I was like, my blood pressure. This doesn't make any sense. And she's like, it's right. And they're like, your blood pressure is so high. That's why you're losing your vision. Um, so they brought me a wheelchair and started running down to emergency and then you rushed to ICU you, you, intensive care yeah, yeah you ended up in ICU for 10 days yeah. so um Chanel came Uncle Noel came the twins came Keisha came everybody came and they said that I had to give birth still still yeah. Still, so Sad. I had to give a vaginal birth. I still had to push. Remember, I was full term. I was full term. That was the same day, the same Monday. I was thirty six weeks. That same exact day it happened. So, yeah, that was crazy. It was. I was so mad at the world after I hated everybody. I was hoping for a miracle, but. Miracle came in a different, different time, you know. Mm -hmm. It just and you know a lot of people ask like, how do you feel talking about it now? Um, I've, I've accepted what happened because there's so many things like I just think of it as a blessing in disguise because there's a lot of people who can't even get pregnant or sure. has lost their only child. Like there's so much. Some people don't even make it. Mm -hmm. And you don't know if he would have been a sick baby. Like, we don't know. Uh, life's a journey, so just got to go with it. And what I'm realizing now is there's a lot of things that are coming out in the media. Um, and there's a lot of neglect that are happening to women. But a lot of, a lot of these things are coming up in social media more and more. And, the more I look into it, the more that I'm seeing this is happening. So eventually they said I had preeclampsia from the jump, like and the doctor maybe after I took it. my sugar test and I was complaining and everything and the doctor could not identify that I had preeclampsia. He was a doctor for like over 30, 40 years. It goes so deep. It goes Remember really when, deep. When the results got sent to a different doctor, a different doctor is like, how did your doctor not know See that you that. have when I'm seeing it right here mm -hmm. in weeks way before? Mm -hmm. Even the hospital. We went to two hospitals. Why didn't they check my medical records from before to even see that too? There were so many mistakes and mess ups that could have been prevented. And it, it used to get me so upset. But I just want to let you ladies know because since it's happened to me, I noticed that it's happened to a lot of people. A lot of people started to speak out and it was because I became very vocal and then that's when I felt more comfortable with discussing it with more people because I'm realizing how my story helped other women who were scared to speak out in the first place. So I just it wanna bring, time, it does, it, it does. So people never heal from it. I'm still not healed from it. And after that happened, I was an emotional wreck. Like, I couldn't, if I'd see a picture of a baby, if I see a baby in a flyer, if I see baby clothes, 
coming back home to all the baby shower gifts there were so many things that were it was so hard but i had to suck it up and just accept what happened and move on from it but not forget what happened and that's made me a very grounded person especially when it comes to health i had to start eating healthy i barely ate any junk food all i had was water weight so the last i had to get three blood transfusions three blood transfusions because of that the weight that i gained was all water weight so i was barely using the bathroom in the last few weeks of my pregnancy and all the water was just in my body that's why i was so getting gaining so much weight they said 20 percent of my body was blood and the rest of it was water liquid for 10 days in the hospital i had a catheter and the liquid was just draining out my body do you remember the bags that had to be changed it was ridiculous only 20 percent of my body had blood so can you imagine three blood transfusions in like two days so it was rough it was rough but god doesn't put he puts his strongly soldiers in these situations and he tests you there was one night when you were sleeping on the bed like by the bathroom and i swear god was talking to me he was he was and i was just looking up in the ceiling i didn't sleep all night all night i was a kid i'm out there crying out and i was a kid v was outside you're like i heard you screaming outside and me i was just in the bed i couldn't see i was so drugged up but I'm just grateful. I'm grateful because both of us could have been gone. I literally saw my life flash before my eyes, especially when they said, you have to call her family. It was the hardest thing to do. And so, and when you're like, in, I see you. So, what? Where's... Man, but... We've been through enough. Yo, we fought some battles and still stuck through. Got to. And there's, I'm just grateful that you've been supportive because I don't know. I just wanna bring awareness and what I was saying before about being healthy too, I changed my, my diet even more, because I was, I was healthy. Like my grandpa turned me really healthy. Um, but I mean like eating junk foods, like really, really junky, junky foods. I cut that out completely. Um, one day I got mad. I don't know if you remember, I had to take my pills. I was prescribed so much medication for my high blood pressure. Um, one was like Adelac, when another one, that was for my blood pressure. Oh, wow, so for my liver my liver yeah i forgot about that i totally forgot because of the water weight my livers were were like damaged yeah that's why the baby passed because you weren't really feeding right no so what was happening i had toxemia all of my blood was circulating everywhere it was just going wild at a very 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 fast rate um so with that happening it wasn't the blood wasn't moving to the placenta properly as it should it was just everything was going rapid i was having some really insane headaches and, yeah, I, and I refused to take any medication for it but my headaches were crazy um so yeah one day i just got mad i took all the pills i'm like i'm tired of this like i was just mad at the world and i'm like yo i'm gonna find it remember i was like i'm gonna find a natural remedy I started like making Small cucumber days. juice, green juices. Side note, my grandfather passed away three months into my pregnancy. And that was rough. That was a really rough time. Like I was there when he passed. So there was, this was just a really, really, really tough time. He's just going to get so late, our daughter. Yeah, we have a three year old now. So six months, where was I? Six months after 
that had happened. I had to see specialists. My, I had a kidney doctor. He specialized in like pregnancy and the kidneys. So he was also a psychologist. So he would talk to me and ask me how I'm doing and stuff. And he would give me follow-ups. So like literally I had to do that six months after this happened. I had so many people come to me during that time, like psychologists, therapists, asking me like they wanted to monitor me to see if just in case I'm suicidal and things like that. I mean, it, it could have gone that way. It didn't get that far, but um, I wanna encourage anybody going through a tough time, try to talk to somebody about it that can actually help you. For me, I bottled everything inside. I didn't really talk about it. I didn't want to. It was tough. I felt embarrassed. Some people were making me feel like, oh, maybe you should have done this. Maybe you weren't eating enough. Maybe, no, it's no maybes. I had preeclampsia. And it happens to a lot of people. And like I said, it's not talked about as much as it should be. So yeah, I'll leave this here. Feel free to ask me any questions. Like I said, I really made this video to be I just want to be open with you guys about the situation. Um, it's happened to a lot of females there. And if you want to talk about it, I'm here. I mean, I didn't really know who to talk to about it. I was only I was going through the situation, but for somebody to actually like give me advice on preeclampsia and what I could do to get better and things like that, I just kept to myself. Um, yeah, so I just wanted to be completely open with you guys. Um, especially I know a lot of people had a lot of questions but didn't know if they should ask because it is a sensitive topic um, yeah I'm more open to it now we did have a funeral for him so that was another tough time there were just so many hurdles that we had no choice but to face but the only thing you can do is accept it accept that it's life things like this happen in life and it doesn't only happen to you it happens to so many people it's just up to us to make that decision of what if if we want to talk about it so I want to be that person to just be open to talk about it if anyone is feeling like alone out there and that it's only happening to you and you don't know what to do you don't even know how to feel you can talk to me no judgment so yeah I also want to thank those of you who have given us the space on this topic because it wasn't always easy discussing it um, and thank you for those of you who were there for me shout outs to you guys too um, there Hello. were yeah thank you so I just wanted to be as open as I could right now because I do plan on getting back on YouTube. I just wanted to, I felt like I needed to address this first, especially with there being videos of my first pregnancy there. So um, also six months after that happened, we got pregnant again. And now- We got pregnant, you got pregnant. We got pregnant mm -hmm. again. We. You were pregnant too. Okay, <laughs> literally, your belly was growing with mine. <laughs> it's cause all the munchies I was eating. Like I always wanted Rice Krispie and Slushy from 7-Eleven. So yes, I do plan on getting back on YouTube. Yay! Yay! The, listen, whenever the timing is right, okay, and that's with all things. Time don't wait on nobody. The universe was not ready for me yet. You hear that? The universe was not ready for me yet. But yeah, I just want to, to all of the people who have lost a child, I really want to send my condolences to you. I know how it feels, even though he wasn't here alive with me. And um, for me, I was definitely attached. Of course, he was growing in me, my first child. 
So whether or not I got to see him alive, I felt him alive. For sure. You know, you felt him alive. Mm -hmm. Nice kick no. <laughs> so yeah, now we have a beautiful baby girl, Soleil. I'll put her picture right here. She Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Is that what they say? Thanks for watching.